singing and playing guitar at the same time. I know this is such a big thing that so many of you guys that watch my lessons want to be able to do, and I want to give you all the tips that I can to help you. For me, that is the most fun that I have when I'm playing guitar. 100% it's when I'm playing and singing. That is when I'm happiest as a musician, personally. Um, but it wasn't always the case that I had that skill. It was something that I had to learn and train myself how to do, especially knowing how to strum more complex rhythms and change chord without looking, without looking at the fretboard. That itself is something that takes a lot of practice and that's what this video is going to focus on. Just the principles of the coordination of playing and singing at the same time. I'm gonna do a separate video where we just look at some basic singing tips for some of you guys watching that may think you're tone deaf or may think that you just can't sing at all. I'm gonna show you some tips and exercises that I've learned over the years that really helped me uh, uh, get to the level I'm at now with my singing and playing, which is by no means, you know, incredible. I, I'm quite humble with my voice, you know, I know it can hold a tune, but there are many better singers than me. But I want to be able to get you guys enjoying playing and singing, and here are my top tips for how to do that. So number one, you've got to know just how crucial song choice is here. And I know this from experience of teaching so many people one-to-one -one how to do this. And everyone has that song that they that is one of their favorites. It's by their favorite band. But just because you like it and just because you can play it on guitar doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right one to begin with. Uh, playing and singing at the same time. And I've made a list of my top recommendations for the song that you should begin playing and singing at the same time that would be really good shout just to get you started on this road. That list of songs is in the description below uh, with full tutorials by myself. A couple of standouts are definitely Ain't No Sunshine. And the biggest reason for that is because no matter how you play it, the chords don't happen, or the guitar playing doesn't happen at the same time as your voice. So you get time to think about what you're singing. Just as a quick example. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away We can do a basic strumming version of that, which I also show in that tutorial, but you get the principle. One of my students from a few years ago was a big Johnny Cash fan, and so am I. And uh, But often Johnny Cash songs can have quite fast strumming, but they're just at a really good range for, uh, for many male voices. And one of the great things we can do there is just strum once per chord. So for something like Ring of Fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. You know, and just strumming once and figuring out where the words fall. I always try and do that in every tutorial that I do, uh, but that's what you need to be making sure you do yourself when you're wanting to play and sing it. If you're totally new to singing over your guitar playing, this is not the time to work on bar chords and any tricky chord changes or lead lines. Keep those totally separate and just work on basic strumming and singing. Tip number three, use a capo to change the key of songs. Now I just mentioned then that uh, Johnny Cash songs can be particularly good for a male vocal range, which is typically lower than a female vocal range. But if I sing this, I fell into a burning ring of fire and we have the melody note actually on I this is it's be on the D string or string 2 that's the melody note if we place the capo at any point on the fretboard the higher we place it the higher the vocal part would be to match the chords that we're playing so if we put it third fret the melody is still on string four and two, the same note, and that's what you would match your voice to. I fell into a burning with a fire. I fell down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. And we could place it even higher as well. Highest I'd probably go is around seventh or perhaps ninth fret. But remember, if you found the note on a string and in open position without the capo, it will still be there when you go higher. So the melody note is still on the D string. 
I I fell into a burning ring of fire I fell down, down, down And the flames went higher And it burns, burns, burns The ring of fire The ring of fire You can even do this by changing the chords You know, by changing the key of, of the song But the capo just makes changing the key super easy And it's, it's a very handy tip In fact, a lot of rock bands And a lot of cover bands in general uh, Tune down by half a step to make the song lower just and just a little bit easier on the vocalist for the high notes. So it's a tip that you need to experiment with, get used to, and find your vocal range. Tip number four is for when you're starting to make the rhythm, so the strumming hand or the playing, more complex uh, and you're trying to sing over it. So there are a couple of things here. The rhythm playing and your guitar has to be automatic. It has to be effortless and easy before you start adding in the vocal and before that's going to work together. There's a couple of things that make that even harder as well, like syncopation. So uh, if you have a very syncopated or offbeat or jagged sounding uh, rhythm line, a lot of Arctic Monkey songs frankly have quite frantic and, and um, funny rhythm lines and then people try to sing over them and they wonder why they can't put it together. It's very strange at first. And I liken this more than anything to when you're first learning to drive and your first driving lesson, you're sat at the wheel and you're in the driving seat and you can't understand how the pedals and gears work at the same time as you're wanting to know where to go. And then later on when you're, you're natural at driving, you know, years, years of experience of driving behind you and all you're thinking about when you're on the road is, is where you're wanting to go and the quickest way from A to B. You're no longer thinking about the gear stick or the pedals and things like that that has become automatic. You do it without thinking. That's the same principle here. Whatever rhythm line it is that you're learning has to be totally mastered. And I would say, I would recommend playing it along to the record to check that you're, you've got it mastered. And then when you come to play it and sing it together, you know that you've got it down and it will hopefully, you'll have a lot more success. And finally, I think if you really want to be able to play and sing uh, maybe at open mic nights or in a band and things, I think everyone needs to realise that you do need to work as much on your singing and on the playing and singing at the same time. Each of those things, um, if you're going to have any success with it, you need to put as much time into that as you did when you were first learning guitar in the early days. There's, there's a big misconception that some people are just born with an amazing voice and um, you know that training and practice doesn't need to come into it with singing. You've either got it or you haven't. Now the notion of that is totally open to debate and I'd love to know what you guys think in, in the comments uh, uh, about you know natural talent and, and vocal ability and things and, and your favourite vocalists. But there are always going to be certain songs and certain types of songs that showcase your voice, whatever range it is, even if it's really low, even if it's gravelly and bluesy, or if it's quite high and angelic, there's always going to be those type of songs that show off your voice well and songs that do not show off your voice well. Be aware of that. And this is where... Basically, there's no substitution for recording yourself. And I always harp on about this, and luckily we do have, uh, I've got some recording tutorials, really basic recording tutorials coming to YouTube uh, within the next few weeks. I'm just putting them together now, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, but even just recording yourself on your mobile phone, on your um, iPad or anything, using voice memos or videos or anything, you need to listen back to yourself for you to be able to judge. You won't be able to judge your singing voice, or it's much harder to do it while you're singing. It's And it will be like listening to your voice back on, her answer, on an answering machine and thinking, oh my God, I don't sound like that. I never realized I wanted to sing like that. But these are steps that you have to get over the building blocks of the confidence to be able to sing in front of anyone, perform on stage, and even sing and speak on camera like I do on YouTube or on the internet. So I hope that really helps you guys. As I say, I've got a second video coming where we just talk about actual singing technique and exercises and top tips to just improve your voice. But they're my tips on the singing and playing aspects. We have more lessons like this in my beginners course, which is available at andyguitar.co.uk. And I hope to see you in another video of mine. Thank you so much for the sport and all the best with your playing and singing.